hey guys here is a whole topic summary for my favorite topic in chemistry organic chemistry now if you want loads and loads of examples if you want to make sure that you know everything you can get that in my free reading guide which is over my website or you can get it from amazon a couple of key definitions you need to know a hydrocarbon is a compound that is made up of hydrogen and carbon only and nothing else. Crude oil is a mixture of different length hydrocarbons. Alkanes are hydrocarbons with single bonds only and the general formula for them is CnH2n plus 2. The first one with one carbon is methane, two carbons is ethane, three carbons is propane, and four carbons is butane. When we're drawing organic compounds, the important thing to remember is that hydrogen always makes one bond and one bond only, and carbon always makes four bonds and four bonds only. So you can see when I've drawn them, each of the hydrogens here only ever makes one bond, whereas the carbons each make one, two, three, four bonds. One, two, three, four bonds. One, two, three, four bonds. And because these are alkanes, they're only ever going to have single bonds. This line here represents a bond, and that is a pair of electrons. This is a covalent bond between these. You need to know the names and be able to recognise the um, pictures of these. And we can see the formula for these follows our general formula of CnH2n plus 2. So methane has one carbon and four hydrogens, ethane two carbons, six hydrogens, propane three carbons, eight hydrogens, and butane four carbons and ten hydrogens. To separate out the mixture of crude oil, we need to use fractional distillation. Crude oil goes in, gets heated up until it is a gas. It then goes into a condensing column. All of the really, really long chain hydrocarbons, which don't um, evaporate, come off here as a residue. And we can use that, the bitumen, we can use that for making roads. It is very, very hot at the bottom. And as we move up the condensing tower, the temperature goes down. And at each different point, different length hydrocarbons are going to come off. So we have gases at the top, petrol, um, naphtha, kerosene, which is fuel um, for planes, diesel, and then fuel for boats. Short hydrocarbons are going to come off at the top, and long hydrocarbons are going to come off at the bottom. Things at the top are going to be really, really flammable. Things at the bottom aren't going to be really, really flammable. Things at the bottom are going to be really viscous, whereas things at the top aren't going to be viscous. The long hydrocarbons that come out of fraction distillation aren't always the most useful ones. We get large amounts of long ones which aren't very useful, but we don't get very many short ones which we need because they are useful. So we can crack the long ones using heat and a catalyst. And this is going to give us short alkanes which we want and alkenes. You need to know how to test for alkenes. This is also the test for double bonds or unsaturation. You can see alkenes have two E's in there. It means they have double bonds. For this test we use bromium water and it goes from orange to colourless. Colourless is really, really important here. Clear is not going to be enough to get you the marks. It has to be colourless. Alkenes have a double bond and are unsaturated. The general formula of them is CN. H2N. All of these are going to end in ene, so there is with two carbons, ethene with three carbons, propene with four carbons, 
butene with five carbons, pentene. When we are drawing things in organic chemistry, we need to remember that hydrogen always makes one bond and carbon always makes four bonds. So ethene down here, hydrogen is making one bond and our carbon is making one, two, three, four bonds. This second carbon is making one, two, three, four bonds. A bond is a pair of electrons that are covalently shared. So a bond can be used by more than one carbon or hydrogen when we're counting things. You need to be careful looking at these ones, one, two, three, four. It would be very easy to make a mistake drawing some of the carbons in the middle here. You need to know how to name, recognise and draw the first four alkenes. The formulas for these for ethene, C2H4, propene, C3H6, butene, C4H8, pentene, C5H10. To make this slightly harder, the examiners might throw in some isomers. So this double bond for butene doesn't need to be here, it could be here. And these are named differently. Here the double bond is in carbon number 1, so that is but 1-ene. Here the double bond is in carbon number 1, 2, so this is but 2-ene. Here the double bond is in carbon number 1, so this is pent 1-ene. Whereas here the double bond is in carbon number 2, so this is pent 2-ene. The complete combustion of a hydrocarbon involves lots of oxygen. That is your roaring blue flame on a Bunsen burner. This is going to be hydrocarbon plus oxygen turns into water and carbon dioxide. Incomplete combustion is where there's not enough oxygen. This is going to be your orange flame on a Bunsen burner. This is much more problematic because as well as the water and carbon dioxide, we're going to get carbon monoxide which is highly toxic, um, your white blood cells prefer it to oxygen, so you will actually um, suffocate to death, generally in your sleep, um, and carbon, which is black soot, which gets everywhere. If you're going to react an alkene with hydrogen, do it at 60 degrees and with a nickel catalyst, this is hydrogenation. Or hardening. you'll go from double bonds to single bonds alkanes. If you're going to react alkenes with water, you're going to get alcohol. This is hydration. And if you're going to react um, alkenes with halogen, you're going to end up with a halo alkane. Alcohols have an OH functional group and they end in O. So one with one carbon is going to be methanol with two carbons, ethanol, with three carbons, propanol, with four carbons, butanol. When we draw our alcohols, we need to put our OH groups on here. And we need to remember and make sure everything has the right number of bonds. Hydrogen is only ever going to make one bond, carbon makes four bonds, and oxygen makes two bonds. Organic chemistry is a very likely place for them to sneak nasty questions in, and this is one of the nasty questions they could sneak in. Propan-1-ol has carbon, has our alcohol group right on the end. Butan-1-ol has our alcohol group right on the ends. Propan-2-ol has it in the middle. Here is our alcohol group up here. And Butan-2-ol has it in the middle here. Learn these and recognise them. Alcohol can be used for drinking or as a solvent. When you react it with sodium, it's going to fizz. When you react with oxygen, it's going to burn. It's just a combustion reaction. And when you react it with water, it's going to dissolve. Another way of producing alcohol is fermentation. This is where we take sugar, we mix it with yeast, we keep it nice and warm, and we're going to get ethanol, which we can use for alcohol, or carbon dioxide, which makes the bubbles in bread. Exactly the same process, beer making and bread making. Carboxylic acids have this as a functional group. Something with one carbon is methanoic acid. Two carbons is ethanoic acid. Three carbons, propanoic acid. Four carbons, butanoic acid.
methanoic acid, one carbon making four bonds, double bondage to oxygen and an alcohol group. Ethanoic acid, propanoic acid and butanoic acid. You need to be able to recognise and draw these. You use carboxylic acid much more than you recognise because ethanoic acid is vinegar. It is an acid, so if you react with any carbonate, you're going to get your standard acid carbonate reaction and it's going to fizz. And if you react with alcohols, you're going to make an ester. If you react an alcohol with a carboxylic acid, you're going to get an ester. For example, if you react ethanol with ethanoic acid, you're going to get ethyl, ethanoate and water. The word mono means one and mer means bit. Poly means lots and mer means bits. So we can say that a monomer is one bit and a polymer is lots of bits that have all been put together. If we're going to have a monomer of ethene, that will just become polyethene. So just putting poly in front of the name there. And if we want to take the drawing and turn it into a polymer, we need to take this double bond and break it. So that bond goes outside. We have a single one between our two carbons. That's the other half of the bond drawing in our hydrogens, square brackets, you need to make sure your bond extends outside the square brackets, and a little N after it, and you need to have a big N in front of your monomer. If you want to have a polymer of propane, we're going to turn that into polypropane. We need to draw it in a slightly different way to the way you may be used to drawing it, with our double bond here, and our third carbon up here going round a corner exactly the same way. Break one of the bonds, one bond left in the middle, other bond goes outside and then all of the other groups around the hydrogen stay the same. Little n after it, big n in front of it. If they want to try and make this more complicated they could change this CH3 group to a fluorine group or a bromine group. All you'd do then is exactly the same, just replace the fluorine group in the same place. When we polymerise something, and this is I'm going to show you is condensation polymerisation, we add monomers together. In condensation polymerisation, we're going to add these bits together here and we're going to lose a water molecule. For condensation polymerisation, you can see we had two different functional groups here. The opposite ends of amino acids, which I've drawn here, and we have lost water as a small molecule. Condensation polymerization is when we lose a small molecule from the reaction and it is usually water but not always. Here is the structure of DNA that I have sitting on my desk and you can see that there are two lines going through it because DNA is a double helix structure. You can see each of the bases in here all the different colours. The bases are A, T, C and G and they go together in that format. A always bonds with T, C always bonds with G. This is to do with the number of connections they can make. So you're always always going to get A bonding with T and C bonding with G. It has a sugar phosphate backbone. And there are two of those, these, these that go up the side around the DNA. Two strands that can break apart down the middle when the DNA wants to replicate. A section of DNA, such as this, can be called a gene. And then genes hold the information for making amino acids and proteins, which is the building block of you and me. Sections of DNA can be read, so three um, bases of DNA can be read and turned into an amino acid. These amino acids can then build all together to make a gene.